Hello there guys, I'm Jordi, a filmmaker and Viavix artist, but probably most of you guys know me from the Cinecom YouTube channel, on which we publish tutorial videos about visual effects, mostly done in Adobe After Effects, but recently we're also exploring Unreal Engine. And that's what this tutorial is gonna be about. Now, my artwork for MSI is where I float in space. That's my utopia, which I'll get into in a moment. And it was created using Unreal Engine and After Effects. Let's have a look. I hope you enjoyed that small clip and I'm super excited to show you guys how I made that. Now, that artwork was an inspiration to you guys for the MSI Creator Awards 2022. It's a big contest where everyone can participate in. You can submit your own artwork before May the 30th in three different categories. There is graphic design, 3D creation and film. I'll be judging for the film category and I want to make it very clear up front that I'll be looking at creativity the most. So if you don't know your way around all of these editing and VFX programs, don't worry. Keep it simple, but try to come up with a good idea, a good story, good execution. You can find the link in the description down below with all of the information. So the theme this year is to create your utopia. And I'm a geek when it comes down to science and the universe and all. I find it very fascinating. And that's why I put myself in the International Space Station. Because one day I hope to go to space for real. Until then, we're gonna have to do it with Unreal Engine. And the GeForce RTX 3090 Supreme X graphics card is gonna help us with that. This is an extremely powerful GPU from MSI, which Unreal Engine is gonna benefit a lot from. It features a Trifrozer 2S thermal design, keeping the GPU cool in style. Now, these here are three Torx fans, version 4.0, which MSI is super proud of. It's a teamwork to focus airflow and air pressure onto the heatsink. The memory modules get a private cooling treatment due to the close quarter heat pipes and heatsink. There is a copper base plate which captures the heat directly which improves overall efficiency. And the core pipes are precision machined for maximum contact over the GPU. So all in all, you get a perfect cooling through a silent design. This is due to the wave curved thin edges which disturbs unwanted airflow resulting in reduced noise. So most definitely have a look at the Supreme series if you're looking for a new GPU. You can actually win one of these in the Creator Awards, so uh, definitely participate, guys. Now, let's put this bad boy into my computer right here so we can fire up Unreal Engine and get started with the tutorial. Five minutes later. Now, we can't just jump straight into After Effects or Unreal Engine. We first need to shoot ourselves. And there are a couple of things that we need to pay attention to. And first of all, we need to set up a green screen and figure out a way to make ourselves float. What I did was hang myself from the roof with a rope. And it actually worked. If you don't have the place at home, definitely try to experiment outside by throwing a rope over a branch of a tree or something or something in a playground. I'm not sure. So do make sure to be careful, guys. You don't want to fall down, break your nose or something like that. So be cautious when trying these visual effects stunts. The next thing are tracking markers. Now, you don't need those only if you want to add camera motion or camera movement into your shot. But I do highly recommend it to add some dynamic to it. And I'll show you how you can bring the camera tracking over into Unreal Engine in a moment. Now, tracking markers could be anything. Put some objects on the floor, Put some marker tapes on your green screen. Just make sure that there is some kind of structure and then you can start with your camera movement. Now we shot from a dolly, obviously you don't have to, you can also just work handheld and just kind of like walk around, make this tilt movement, which we did. It's always good to film the ground and the back of the green screen. That way you're giving plenty of data to After Effects in which we're going to do the 3D camera tracking to tell the program like, hey, this is my floor, this is my background. You want to give enough information. And you know that tilt effect that we actually did was with a purpose. This way we're bringing perspective into our shot, giving even more information to After Effects so that it can do its tracking even better. And you can see a bunch of stuff laying on the ground like this ball, some sandbags, this tape and everything that is giving us texture on the ground, which again is going to help with the tracking. 
All right, we've got our shot. We can now jump into After Effects to do the editing. And we're gonna do that on this little bad boy right here, which is powered by the MSI Supreme X, an RTX 3090 graphics card. And definitely inside Unreal Engine, we're gonna see a lot of performance with this little bad boy. All right, into After Effects. I got my shot right here of me floating in the air and we make this tilt movement until you see me floating in front of the green screen. So the first thing that we wanna do is just bring that into a new composition because we wanna start with the camera tracking. With it later selected, head over to the tracker here on the window on the right side. And if you can't find that window, you can always head over to the menu on top, click window, and from there choose tracker to bring up this window. And the only, only thing that we have to do is press track camera and let After Effects do its thing. You know, visual effects these days is pretty lazy. You just press a few buttons and you let the programs do their thing. Not only the programs, the hardware is doing its thing as well. And so while the analyzing is happening, you can always go over to the effects controls and from there, check out the 3D camera tracker effect, which has been applied to the clip. And you can see here it's progress. So uh, we're not gonna wait for that. We're just gonna add a cut right here in the tutorial. Okay, you probably saw that cut because I wasn't really sitting the same position anymore. I mean, who wants to for five minutes? Anyways, our tracking is done, guys. If you have your effect selected here in the effects controls, you can see all of these points now appear, and that means that the tracking is successful. Now, what we can do here is kind of like select a group of these points, and we're going to define the ground plane. Ideally something underneath me and I think that I'm hanging somewhere right here where that tape is So I'm just going to select a bunch of these points and see if that looks straight with the floor and it actually does So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say create solid and camera There we go and now we can check if that solid stays on the floor and it actually does so that is super good That means the tracking is successful successful again All right, we're gonna need one more plane and we're going to do that here in the back somewhere That's where these tracking points on the green screen come in place select them right click and we're going to say create solid This way we have two visual points of where the floor is where I am hanging That's gonna be important and where the green screen is at now, unfortunately, we cannot just send over the tracking data from After Effects over to Unreal Engine. We actually have to take a little detour through Cinema 4D, but no worries, guys. You don't need to know anything about the program, and Cinema 4D Lite is actually part of After Effects, so also no additional programs to be installed. And that little detour is super easy. We're going to start off by going over to File, and from there, choose Export. Maxon Cinema 4D exporter. Now it's gonna give you a pop-up and that is going to say like, hey, there is a 2D layer in your composition and that is the actual video file of me floating here on that rope. But that's okay, we don't need that clip. We're gonna keep it inside After Effects. We just need the tracking data and the two solids which are in a 3D space. So hit okay and choose where you want to export that. And I'm just gonna call that camera tracking and hit save. Now, there's going to be a second problem. The file that we just have exported is still something that Unreal Engine cannot read. We're going to have to kind of like transform that into a different file format. Again, no worries, super easy. What you have to do is open up Cinema 4D and then just transform it. Now, here's the thing, guys. Cinema 4D Lite is something that you cannot open directly. So what you have to do is right-click into your project folder and say New Maxon Cinema 4D File. Click on that, choose where you want to save that new file. I'm gonna call it camera tracking. Unreal Engine, that way I know that this is gonna be the file that I can use inside Unreal Engine. So hit save and automatically Cinema 4D will open up. That is exactly what we want. And there we have it, Cinema 4D Lite is open. We can close here the startup dialog. What you wanna do now, this is by the way an empty project. What you wanna do now is simply load in that file that we previously exported. So go over to File, Open Projects. And right here is that camera tracking file, the one that we created first. Hit Open, and there we go. You can actually use the timeline here on the bottom to see how that camera tracking looks like. And we can see our solids in there. And as we can see, everything is working perfectly. Now, the only thing that we have to do to transform this into something that Unreal Engine can read is go again over to File, and then from here, say, Save Project for Cineware. 
Now you could save this as a new file, but I'm just going to overwrite the existing one that I'm currently working in. And that is this one, the Unreal Engine camera tracking file or project and just hit save. Yes, I would like to replace it. And that's it. All right, we can now close Cinema 4D and here in After Effects, let's just save that project as well. Always make sure to save your stuff, guys. And we can now hop into Unreal Engine and here is where the real fun is gonna start. We're going to work in Unreal Engine 4 and I have the latest version installed, which is 27. So just hit launch. Now the whole reason why we're working in Unreal Engine 4 is because I actually purchased some sort of a template uh, to help me a little bit further with the International Space Station. And that was built for Unreal Engine 4. And that's why we're not going to work in 5. But here's something to know, guys. Unreal Engine 4 is not less than Unreal 5. 5 just comes with a whole bunch of new features that, yes, are very nice to have, but it doesn't mean that you'll get better results or better looking animations or 3D renders off from it. With the right settings and the right tools, we can get amazing results off from Unreal Engine 4. All right, I already have my Spacetopia project in here, but we're going to create a new one, of course, for this tutorial. So I'm going to click on Film, Television, and Live Events, because after all, that's what we're trying to make here, and we're just going to pick a blank project. So hit next. No, we don't need starter content. We can just disable that. And of course, ray tracing. Yes, we're going to enable that. Now let's choose where we'd like to save the project, which I'm going to do here in my MSI artwork folder. Select that and give it a name. For example, Space Station. There we go. That was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> All right, let's hit create project and now wait it out until Unreal Engine is started. You know, that's the thing with Unreal Engine. It kind of takes a little bit long to compile all the shaders and everything to open up the project. Uh, <laughs> After Effects and Premiere definitely go faster. But hey, it is what it is. And once it's open, it's actually really fun to work in it. In the meantime, guys, you definitely want to check out the Creator Awards website. You can see here which prizes they're giving away, such as the Supreme X. 3080 graphics card, which is an insane card. Definitely if you're working inside Unreal Engine. You're also giving away an MSI Creator laptop, the P100X, which is a beast of a desktop computer. We have one downstairs here and a super cool monitor. So definitely check out those prizes, guys. And of course, you can also see what the other submissions are, the other entries, so you can take a little bit of inspiration before you start yours. There's graphic design category 3D, animation and film. I'm the judge for film, so I really hope you see your entry as well here in the list. I can't wait to see what you guys are going to make. I look really forward to that. We currently have an empty project, which is obvious, but I'm going to load in my International Space Station. So I'm going to go back to the Epic Games Launcher and here in my library for Unreal Engine, I'm going to scroll down and here you can find all of the items that you purchased off from the Unreal Marketplace. You can always click here on top Marketplace to search for something like worlds, backgrounds, models, anything that is made for Unreal Engine. And I find this great, guys. I don't know anything about 3D myself. I have no idea how Cinema 4D or Blender works. I just have, I think, good ideas. <laughs> and I'm really happy that this Marketplace is there so that I can easily download it, get it into my project and create the idea that I have in mind without knowing all of these techniques technical details. So here it is, the ISS Columbus, and we're going to click on Add to Project. And we can select here the project that we have just created, which is Space Station. Select that and say Add to Project. It's going to download the project off from the marketplace, which I purchased, and it's going to load it in into my project. All right, let's go back to Unreal Engine. And right here, we can now find a folder called ISS Columbus which is the one that we loaded in. I'm going to open up the Maps folder and from here open up ISS Columbus. These orange tiles, guys, are maps. You can kind of see it as different projects if we talk about After Effects or something. Um, so we're just going to open up one map and work entirely in there. We can forget about all the rest. So just double click on it and it's going to open up the Columbus. Now, navigating inside Unreal Engine is usually done like you play a game. You hold down your right mouse button and then just use the WASD keys to move around. If it goes too fast, just scroll. I'm still holding down my right mouse button, by the way. I scroll down and this way I'm moving slower. If I scroll up, I'm going to move faster. So that is how you navigate inside Unreal Engine. All right, all looking good and well. Now let's bring in a virtual camera in here that follows that same movement as we did on the green screen, which is going to be that camera tracking file that we created off from Cinema 4D. 
Now to load in Cinema 4D files in Unreal Engine, we are first gonna have to enable a plugin. To do that, we can simply head over to the edit menu on top, select plugins, and from there, we're going to choose for Cinema 4D or C4D importer, which is this one. Click enable, and it's going to ask you to restart Unreal Engine. So let's hit restart now, and it's going to open up the project again. Now, no worries, guys. It's only the first time that you open up a new project that has to load all of these shaders and everything. The second time after that, of course, it goes much faster. Now, by default, it's always going to open up the blank map. If you don't really like that, go to edit, choose project settings. And from here, go over to maps and modes. And here we can choose editor startup map. And I'm going to choose there the ISS Columbus. All right, so let's close that. Now, every time I'm going to open up my project, this Columbus map will be loaded. All right, click here on Datasmith, which will now appear after we enable the plugin. And we're going to search for that Cinema 4D file, Camera Tracking Unreal Engine. Select that and hit Open. And we can choose where we would like to import that. You know what, let's import that into the contents folder, the root folder, hit OK, and hit import. You don't have to worry anything about these settings right here. Just make sure all of these are enabled. And there we go. It has imported all of these files right here. And we want to go over to animations. Right in here, we can find a level sequence file. We can right click here in our project window or content browser window, head over to animation and from there also locate level sequence to create a new animation file. That's basically what this is. Now to give an idea, a level sequencer can be seen as a composition, perhaps an after effects. It's the place where you have your timeline, your different layers and where we can create keyframes. So let's open that up and let's see what's inside. There we go. And we can see that our 3D tracker camera is in there. And all of those keyframes that we saw inside After Effects are in here as well. When you select here the 3D camera tracker, you will actually see a window appear right there. And now we can play back that animation and see the exact same thing here that we had inside After Effects. But something is looking off, as we can tell, most definitely. Although the solids are at the right position, the whole Columbus thing, the ISS, is not really at the right spot. So let's see what's wrong and let's see how we can fix that. For now, I'm going to close here the sequencer and our world outliner in which we have all of our layers to create this ISS space station. We can also see now the 3D camera tracker layer. This works just like an After Effects, guys. I'm gonna go scroll up here and collapse these two folders and just look at the camera tracker right here. When you double click on it, you'll actually move to that camera which sits right there. Now we can't really see much because it is pretty dark here in this scene. So it might help to change here our view on top from lit to unlit. And now we can much better see, okay, here's our camera and over there is the ISS. The one thing that I instantly see is that the space station is way too small. This right here is a solid that laid on the bottom of our studio. And this right here is in the back, the green screen. And you can kind of see here, if we look at the space where they are, this doesn't really match up. So there are two things we can do. We can scale up the space station or we can scale down the solids and the camera. I'm going to choose the space station. So let's scale that one up. I'm going to choose the scale tool here on top and just pull here from the middle anchor. Pull that up to scale up your space station. There we go. And it seems like I want to scale it up pretty big, or I think that we are looking pretty good. Okay, if you think it's big enough, we can take the position tool and then just use the axis here to bring it in place. And if you want to take a look here at the back, we can see here the purple solid. We want to make sure to align that with the back wall of the space station. If that sits in place, we can push it down, perhaps scale it up a tiny bit more. There we go. Something that makes sense. All right, looking good. Take the position tool. We want to make sure to see the green solid. It's right there. And kind of like make sure right here I'm looking at that it sits on the floor. Looking good. And the back one as well. We have to move up the space station just a little bit more. There we go. So now I'm pretty sure that the back of the space station is also the back of my green screen. And right here on the bottom, where is it? Right there, <laughs> there are my green solids. This here is the point, the bottom of the studio where I am floating above. So that gives me a sense of where I am in the space as well. I should be somewhere right here above this green spot, the green solids right here. So now let's go back to the level sequencer where the animation is at right here. I'm going to click on my camera to get a view of it. And we're going to scrub through it to see the animation. And that is already looking a whole lot better. 
look at it guys now the camera is something that is currently going through the wall where's my camera just double click on it it's right here and we can kind of see here how it floats outside of these walls so i'm actually just going to open up this wall we can select and just go inside to get a better view I'm just gonna select this wall and you know what? Just delete it, there we go. So now we have this open wall in space. Guys, I do not recommend that you do this. Do not travel to space with a missing wall in your spaceship. <laughs> Never do that. But you know, for Unreal Engine, it just makes much more sense because right now let's have a look at the animation, open up the level sequencer again. We don't have that problem anymore here with the wall. This is all looking fantastically great. Oh, before I forget, guys, everything is going super smooth inside Unreal, but that is obviously because of the graphics cards, the MSI Supreme X RTX 3090 graphics card, which is a beast of a card. If you have performance problems, guys, go over to the settings button here on top and go to the engine scalability setting and decrease that to high, medium, or low. See what works for you. I could actually go for cinematic. Why was it set on epic? And you know what? Material quality, let's set it that on epic as well. There we go, superior quality without any frame loss. <laughs> That's the beauty of working with such a video card. All right, let's continue. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is add in some 3D models, meshes as they call them inside Unreal Engine, that we're going to animate, such as the popcorn that you saw flying by, but also things like Lucky, the mascot from MSI. And you know what? It's actually also a little bit my mascot. Look at here, we got Lucky, so I'm gonna just uh, add him right here. It's a magnet. <laughs> There we go. Lucky is with me now. Now to do that, super easy guys. You can find 3D models all over the internet or as well from the Unreal Marketplace. I got a folder right here called Meshes and in there I got Lucky and a popcorn. So what I do here is actually select that folder, hit Ctrl C to copy that, go into my Space Station Project folder, go into Content and right in here I'm going to paste in that folder. Now, automatically, it's also going to add itself here into Unreal Engine. It will actually give you a pop-up like, hey, would you like to import these files that you just put into the project folder? I'm going to say, yes, import them. A pop-up will appear. Let's say import all and just kind of like wait it out until everything has been imported. But we should be able to find them back here. Meshes, that's the entire folder that I imported. And right in here, we can find Lucky and the popcorn. So we can just go ahead and drag dragon into the scene nice wordplay there and i'm going to scale them up because we've actually scaled up the entire set right here the entire space station maybe it was a better idea to scale down the camera <laughs> now that i'm starting to think of it so with that layer selected here in our details panel we can simply like scale up that dragon and we're gonna have to scale them up tremendously i believe like i don't know like 50 or something there we go we Starting to see a little lucky over there. Here he is, little lucky. There we look at him shine. All right, so we have him in the scene or her. We don't know that. I'm going to let's maybe like scale it up a little bit more, like 100. That's maybe too big. Doesn't matter. Mascot lucky can't be too big. All right, now let's add in our popcorn, which is right here under popcorn source. Where is it? Pop two. That's the thing. Static mesh. You want to look for mesh. That's the actual model mesh. All the rest that you see around it are textures. These red files are textures and these green ones are materials. And uh, textures are being used inside materials and then the materials can be used on top of the mesh or the 3D model. Not something to worry about. We are filmmakers who do a little bit of VFX. We are not really 3D artists. So uh, let's just only look at the mesh here. Let's drag that popcorn in as well. I'm gonna have to scale that up a bunch too. Uh, maybe a hundred. All right, a hundred. I'm starting to see something here. But a popcorn is, of course, a little bit smaller. There it is. Then Lucky. So, let's keep it not too big. Now, there's going to be a problem, guys. Once we are going to start animating that popcorn, uh, you'll notice that when we're going to rotate that, let's take the rotation tool, that it will not really rotate around its own axis, but actually ro around the pivot point, which lays a little bit further down. So we're gonna have to find a way to bring this pivot point right here into the middle of the popcorn. Now the problem is that once we're going to bring this popcorn into the level sequencer, it's going to think about that initial pivot point position again. So it's going to rotate again on this point here on the bottom. That is not what we want. Luckily I did found you see, luckily, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I was distracted. Luckily, I did found a workaround for that. 
What I'm going to do here is actually create a blueprint. And let's do that here in the popcorn folder itself. Right click, choose blueprint class. We're going to say actor. It's going to create a new file and we're going to call this popcorn. Yeah, that's it, because the original one is called pop2. So <laughs> we can just use popcorn for the blueprint. Double click on the blueprint to open it up. Basically, this is now an empty file. Blueprints are used to add functionality to your meshes, to anything. <laughs> it's, it's a part to give functionality. There we go. But we're only going to use the group functionality of it. So you can see it as, as a folder. You can put multiple stuff in here, and then you have here the blueprint. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of make this uh, window a little bit smaller like that. I'm going to go back to my mesh, my pop2, and just drag that into the layers here on the left. There we go, pop2, and it's now inside the blueprint. We can navigate through it as well here. Now, the cool thing is that the folder has its pivot point here in the middle of the blueprint. So, what I can do is with my pop2 selected, I can just kind of like bring this down here until it sits in the middle somewhere. And you know what? I'm also going to scale it up by a 50. There we go. Might want to zoom out now. There it is. There's my popcorn. Let's bring it down again. So that it sits somewhere in the middle of this raster here. And I think this is looking pretty good. All right. Hit save. Close that. And now we can actually remove the pop two from my world outliner because we're going to use that group or the blueprint. Let's drag that in here. There we go. Bring it a little bit closer. And there is my popcorn. And you can kind of see here now that the pivot point, when I'm going to rotate, that it rotates nicely around its own axis, which is exactly what we want. So there we go. That's a little workaround to it. All right, we got our popcorn. We got Lucky right here, which is also inside Unreal Engine. Let's animate everything now so we can bring it back all into After Effects. All right, let's go back to the root folder, content folder right here. Open up the camera tracking, Unreal Engine, animations, camera tracking, Unreal Engine. Let's open up that, our sequence leveler. Level sequencer. I can never get the names right. <laughs> we got the camera in here. Let's add some more objects in there as well that we would like to animate. Simply click here on track, actor to sequencer and we're going to click on the dragon that is one that we want to animate but also let's go add another one here actor to sequencer the popcorn where is it right there all right they're both in the timeline right now and we actually always want to view what the camera is looking like so we can kind of click here on lock the view of that one this way we can always see here in the main window what our camera view is looking like and i'm actually going to collapse the 3d camera tracker layer because we don't need that for now we want to focus on the dragon and the popcorn you know what let's start with the popcorn we don't have any properties yet because unlike after effects we need to assign which properties we would like to animate so let's click here on the track button next to the layer and we're going to look for transform it'll now add that property to it which we can now expand so that we can animate it the location and the rotation looks good to me. I'm just going to make a little bit more room here in my interface. As you can see, it's always easier to work with two displays. So if you're interested in getting this MSI monitor, get two of them. <laughs> We're going to start here on the bottom. By the way, if you don't want to see this grid, if that is bothering you guys, just simply hit the G key on your keyboard to make that disappear. But that will make everything disappear. Like also like your pivot points like your anchor point and everything your rotation tool so just keep that in mind you can enable and disable that as you're working i'm going to bring my popcorn here into my view so for a moment here i'm actually going to disable to lock the 3d camera tracker view right there is the camera so i want to bring here the popcorn right to the camera so let's do that so let's bring it to it you can use the axis there we go and i should believe now that the popcorn is right in front of my lens. If I'm going to click here on this camera icon again, I should be seeing. No, I'm not seeing it. Damn it. <laughs> a little bit more to the front. Maybe that popcorn is not large enough. Let's make that, let's scale it up. Like, I don't know, 10? That's too big. Five. Five is good. All right, let's go back to camera view. There it is. I can see my popcorn now. All right, so we've got it right here. Let's start in the beginning. It's somewhere right here. Let's start, you know what, off screen. So I'm going to bring this popcorn 
off screen, so just pull it back. And we're going to create an animation for the location. And just to be sure, I'm going to create an, a keyframe for both X, Y, Z and for the rotation as well here for the roll, the pitch, and the jaw. So we can go a little bit forward in time, and now let's push that popcorn further away. Now, unfortunately, we cannot use these axes right here, because as we do that, you can see that we won't create a keyframe for it. We have to use the properties in here. So let's change the Y value here to bring it forward. And you can now see the spline of that animation. It's also automatically creating a keyframe for us, things we all know from After Effects. And if we like, we can also animate the roll, we can animate the pitch, whatever we want. And if we play it back, you can kind of see here what it does. It's beautifully like rolling in the space and it's going up. There we go. Now, there's something that we need to keep in mind, guys. Uh, we want to make sure that the popcorn is in sync with my mouth so that it actually goes into my mouth. Now, to do that, I'm going to have to go back to Adobe After Effects right here. And I'm going to look for that point where I'm actually like just about to eat it, like right here. Like, here in my timeline, I'm going to right click on the time so that I can see the frames. I'm currently at frame 286. So going back to Unreal Engine, I'm also going to go to frame 286, which is right somewhere here. So at this point, I'm eating the popcorn. So I want to bring it up a little bit. Let's do that. So at this point, I want to bring it up on the Z axis, somewhere like that. You can always like un check here the camera view just to make sure that we're doing the right thing bring that up perhaps bring that up there we go and i'm just going to like guess a little bit where i'm going to eat which i think is right here but you know this gives me a good view of what i have here in my timeline and we can make sure that it follows the camera so right here you can see that it goes out of the frame no worries, like we might want to bring it down a little bit more. So we're going to go back to these middle keyframes and perhaps here push on the Z axis to uh, bring it down. There we go. So that it's still in our frame as it comes through. By the way, the rotation, I'm just going to bring that all the way till the end here, these keyframes. You know, this works exactly the same as an After Effects. We can place keyframes, we can move them around, nothing really special about those. But you know, this here is starting to look pretty good. Here it goes up and I'm going to eat it. You know, it's that simple, delicious popcorn. Now for those advanced people under you who know about the animation curves to make animations more smooth and everything, we can actually click here on this button to show the animation curves. And uh, we can select a property such as the transform property of the popcorn. We can even fine tune a little bit more such as the X, Y or Z animations. And also change the curve of that. Like these things you should be familiar with if you know what you're doing as well inside After Effects. All right, guys, just like with anything in visual effects, you know that it takes time. You have to play back your animation a couple of times. You need to make adjustments. Even when you start rendering, you might see mistakes and you have to go back into Unreal or After Effects to make adjustments. It's a never ending progress. I've just shown you the basics of what you have to do. Now it's up to you to fine tune, to, to try and see where those keyframes need to be exactly. Look at your animation, how everything flows and goes. That's what I did and I spent hours, if not days on my small little artwork piece. I didn't do anything more than I just showed you in this tutorial. I just started to fine tune more with those keyframes and everything. I'm gonna cheat a little bit, guys. This right here is the initial project that I worked on, but it's built the exact same way as we've just seen. I just uh, made a couple of changes, such as I've kind of like moved the wall here in the space station just to have a little bit more depth into my scene. And also I've added a couple of more elements, like uh, we have this floating banana over here, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. We also have this, uh, this ruler, and I think that we have a pencil here in the back as well. Basically, what I've done is when I select these, we can see here in our sequencer, all the only thing that I did was here just adding some sort of a rotation animation to it from the beginning till the end. I uh, gave them a position in a 3D space, of course. What I also did was uh, for Lucky right here, I added a little bit more to it, not only a rotation, there is the mascot, but also a position property. So that's the only thing that I did. Super simple, guys. The popcorn is right here, and let's follow that one too. So you can see here its entire path, you know, just like we've seen before, that's the only thing that we're doing right here. Now you will notice here, I'm not going to select the 3D camera here and looking at the final animation that there is this kind of like focus pool 
going on. That is also a property that we can animate. I've already added it to it. If we expand that property, it's right here. Actor to track, focus tracking. Basically here we can click on track and from there choose what kind of property that we would like to uh, animate from the camera. So those things could be like the film back, the focus settings and everything. We can all bring that into here. So that's basically what I did. I created a keyframe here for pinpointing the popcorn. That way we get automatic uh, focus pooling so that it follows the popcorn itself. We can uh, select any layer here from my sequencer. Of course, we can also choose Lucky, etc. And I just created a keyframe going from the popcorn eventually to Lucky. You can see here that other layer so that I focus pool to that layer. Super easy, but now comes the tricky part. We're gonna have to export this as a video file so that we can work further onto it in After Effects. The problem is that we're going to have to make two exports, one for the backgrounds, which is the actual space station, and one for the elements, which should be in front of me. That's why we need two layers. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna have to do an alpha export, and we're gonna have to go over to the menu on top, edit, and then choose project settings because we can't just make an alpha export. We first need to say our project needs to be alpha or something. I, I still don't get it either, but it's a setting that we have to make. Just search here in your project settings for alpha and you should find this option right here, post-processing, enable alpha channel support in post-processing. By default, it's set to disabled. You're gonna have to set that to allow true tone mapping. Select that one and Unreal Engine is going to ask you to restart again. Now, unfortunately, it's also gonna have to recalibrate all of its shaders. So you're gonna have to wait that out. It's gonna take a little time, but there you know it. Go grab yourself a cup of coffee. Luckily, I've already enabled that. So we can just go ahead and start rendering. Now for the first render, I kind of want to disable all of my foreground objects so that I only render the background. So let's locate all of those foreground objects here in the world outliner, which is going to be the banana, Lucky, the pencil, the popcorn, and the wooden ruler. With all of them selected, we're going to change the same property for all of them in the details panel. And we're going to search for game. And you should see right here an option called actor hidden in game. Just enable that. And by checking that box, once you're going to render, it's going to keep that in mind and say, okay, we don't want to render those. Just to be sure that you got the right thing, press G on your keyboard, which will uh, remove all of the uh, widgets and everything, but also those layers that you have enabled not to show itself in the game. So there you can see if everything looks good or not. All right, time to export, guys. Here in our sequencer, we can find the button that says, render this movie to a video. So let's click on that. It has added to the level sequencer here in the queue. If you have multiple level sequencers, you can also click here on the uh, render button on top and from there select which one. We already have this one here selected. But we're gonna have to set a few settings obviously. So click here on unsaved config and we're gonna have to choose like what do you want to export as? Like what's the format, the resolution, the quality settings and everything that can be set right in here. Now the way that Unreal Engine works is you just have to say like which settings would you like to change? It's the same thing as with your properties here in Level Sequencer. It also didn't give you all of its properties. You had to select first which properties that you wanted to animate. It's the same thing with exporting as well. Like we only have a few settings in here. If you want to have more, we click here on the settings button and choose which properties we would like to add to the exporter. Now one very important setting is going to be the one on top here, anti-aliasing. You see, Unreal Engine is a game engine. It's built for real-time rendering. And when you're going to set a high amount of anti-aliasing, it's unable to do that real time. So that's why it's giving you the option if you're going to render for a movie, perhaps like we're going to do, then you can set that a whole bunch higher, which is what we're going to do. First things first, we're going to say overwrite anti-aliasing and make sure that the methods right here is set to none. These right here are methods that are used for real time anti-aliasing. Set it to none and set one of these sample spatial sample counts to one of your own. I suggest to go for 32 or 64. You can always go higher, but just rendering is going to take longer. Let's go for 64. That's what I picked for my final result and it actually looks pretty good. 
All right, JPEG, that is not what we want, so we can just delete that. And we're gonna go back to settings, and I'm gonna choose right here, EXR sequence. Now that's actually a raw format, but it's also going to export as frames. Uh, you always have to do that when you're working in a 3D environment or something. Uh, never render to an actual video file like an MP4 or a QuickTime file, because if your rendering goes wrong at a certain point and you're exporting to JPEGs, PNGs, or EXRs, which are also just still frames, you can always like start your new render, like after it's crashed from the frame where it's crashed. So if you have already 100 frames that are good, you can start rendering from the 101st frame. Otherwise, if you're exporting to QuickTime or MP4, you're gonna have to redo your entire exports. All right, that setting is good. Let's click on the third rendering and here on top it says include alpha. Now for this one, we don't have to do it because it's the background. So let's not select that. Head over to output, which is the last setting. And right here, we can define the resolution. We are working in a 4K resolution sequence. So let's set that to an ultra HD or 4K resolution. And of course you wanna choose where you would like to export it which I'll do here in my root folder, right click new folder. Let's give that a name. For example, this is gonna be the background and say select folder. Here on the bottom, we can choose the range of our export. So if we set a custom range, we can say like start from the frame zero, which we obviously wanna do. And we can then look at our sequence here. It stops here at frame, let me check here at 574, so we can set that in here as well. Now you could leave this blank if you wanna render everything, so you know, let's just disable that. <laughs> But uh, you know, if your render crashes, then you know that you can set a new starting point or different ending point if you just wanna render those few frames in between. Now we could go ahead and just start exporting or we can also save all of our settings into a preset. That is something that I really advise to do. So here on the top, click on load slash save preset and we're gonna save it as a new preset. Give that a name, for example, this is gonna be my EXR sequence and hit save. There we go, so we can click on accept right now and you can see here in the settings that it will call up my presets. Always make sure to select your level sequencer and make sure that it's set to the right sequence and also the right map. Because yes, we can actually select a different map in here and start rendering something completely different. That's not what we want, so uh, make sure to double check that. And once everything looks good, just hit on render local. And there we go, the rendering will start. Now we just lean back and watch. Or you go grab yourself a coffee, let's do that. That was a great coffee, guys. In the meantime, the rendering is complete. Again, we are seeing tremendous amount of power with the Supreme X graphics card from MSI. The RTX 3090 is really ideal for working in Unreal Engine, but also for rendering because it's going to utilize the GPU entirely and that is great. Now after rendering, you'll see that we get a whole bunch of EXR files. So what I would recommend to do, because we're going to bring these into After Effects, after Effects does have a little bit of trouble with EXR files, so I would just throw them into Media Encoder. When opening up Media Encoder, you can simply click here on the Add Files button. From there, locate your EXR sequence, select the first one, and on the bottom, make sure that it says Open EXR Sequence. Hit Open, it will load in all of those EXR files, and from there, we can make an export to, where is it, QuickTime. ProRes right here, one of these. For the background, the 422 is perfect. Once we're going to transcode to one for the foreground objects, we are gonna need an alpha layer in the back. And for that, you wanna pick the preset 444 with alpha, very important. But again, this right here is the background, so we don't have to do that. All right, now for the foreground layers, we're gonna have to render now with an actual alpha. We're gonna do the opposite. This time for the background, I'm gonna select all these uh, spaceship panels right here. Look in my details for game, and that should bring us actor hidden in game, yes. And for the foreground objects, which are all these right here, we're gonna disable that. So when we press now G, we should not see the spaceship anymore, but we do see all of the uh, elements, the foreground elements. 
Now, I will also export the popcorn on a different layer. That way, it's just going to be a little bit easier inside Adobe After Effects to have that on a separate layer because maybe I want to change the position a little bit or uh, animate the scale and the position and all to bring it better into my mouth as I'm going to eat that popcorn. I'm going to select the popcorn and also make sure to say actor hidden in game. Let's first export Lucky here, the mascot and everything else like the banana. All right, just like before, hit the export button from the sequencer. Our previous uh, preset is still in there, but we want to change one thing. Click on it, and from the deferred rendering settings, make sure now that accumulator includes alpha is checked. That's the only thing that we have to do. Hit accept, and just like before, click on render and wait it out. But we don't have to wait that long with this little beast right in there. Guys, one thing that I do have to mention that if you are going to get yourself an RTX 3090, it is pretty big. It's a big card. However, this is like a medium-sized case, computer case, and I was actually able to fit it in there. So with uh, good cable management and everything, you should be able to get it inside one of these normal computer cases. All right, fast forward a couple of minutes and I'm gonna go now inside Adobe After Effects and I have a folder right here with my Unreal renders. Here's the background, the foreground and the popcorn. And if everything went well, we can actually now drag in the background. Let's start with that one into our composition that we worked in previously. I'm just gonna lay it here in the bottom. And for myself here, I'm going to, for this moment now, set my opacity to 50 because I just want to check if everything looks good. And it actually does. It looks pretty darn good. Look at that. The tracking works. Everything flows nicely. Now here's something what I did with the popcorn because after all, it was not easy to make it aim into my mouth. When we are here at that frame 286, where I'm actually opening my mouth, what I do here is grab my rulers and I can press Ctrl R on my keyboard here when I'm in my composition panel to bring up the rulers. And I'm just going to make a cross here where my mouth is at. Let's now disable here my layer and see where I'm at at the background, which is somewhere, whoops, not too much zooming in, uh, which is somewhere right here, just above this button right there. So I'm going to memorize that position and perhaps make adjustments inside Unreal Engine to my animation of the popcorn so that it actually goes to that point on frame 268, 64, 84, you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, like I said before, visual effects is all about, you know, going back and forward, making adjustments until it looks good. But that's at least how I did it, how I aimed the popcorn going into my mouth. All right, everything looks really good, really clean, really nice. We don't need the 3D camera tracker anymore and these two solids, we can just remove those. Now it's just a simple matter of having the background in the back. Here is me in the middle. Let's put the uh, opacity back to 100. Here is the foreground. Here we go. Look at that. We have an alpha layer, which is great. All those objects now. Now they're all floating in the studio, which is also pretty cool, actually. And finally, we have the actual popcorn. Let's bring that in here as well. It's not as long because once I eat the popcorn, which is right here, it should be gone. So I'm just going to move that up a little bit. In the beginning, it's not visible. So that's why we don't see it. It comes in right here. And it goes all the way up there into my mouth, eating the popcorn. All right, this is all looking good. I'm really happy with the tracking and how everything looks. The final thing that we have to do now is the keying. Now, here's the problem, guys. We were not really smart. I'm going to select my layer, hit on solo to only see me. We were not smart in the sense that um, I'm not really uh, in the green screen. <laughs> you know the saying, we fix it in post. Well, uh, I regret that uh, saying. <laughs> because indeed, we have to fix it in post. You can see my hands here going over this the light stands. And also, I'm just covering a lot of the tracking markers and everything. And those are black tracking markers. We should have used green tracking markers. That was going to be way easier. So anyways, what we did for the keying was actually a rotoscope and then a keying. Let me show you how I did that. So first things first, I'm going to double click here on the Jordi layer and I'm gonna go over to the rotor brush tool on top. I'm going to like paint myself in with this green line. There we go. That way I'm saying, I'm making a selection and saying like, hey, this is me, this is what I wanna keep. And uh, oh yeah, it's going to say like, hey, 
the rotor brush works better if you're going to set the resolution to full. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to my composition instead of my layer menu here and set here my composition settings to full, full quality. Go back to my layer here. And you want to make sure here, I'm actually going to delete the 3D camera tracker effect. We no longer need that. The rotor brush effect has been applied to it automatically. You want to make sure here that it says version 2.0. The classic one does not work. <laughs> so make sure to select the new rotor brush and for quality of course you want to go for best all right now it's just a matter of like painting yourself in uh things like hair is pretty hard to do although there is a hair tool there we go let's say we don't want that also here so this is a little bit of work guys so with holding down alt you can bring up the red uh painter and say this is the area that i don't want and uh, with the green you want to say like hey this is what i do want to select as for the hair, if you click here on the rotor brush tool, hold down your mouse button, then select refine edge tool, we get a new tool that helps us to kind of say like, hey, this all here is hair. So uh, refine that area. There we go. You can actually see here that it does a pretty good job with hair. All right. So now it's just a matter of going forward in time. So you just go forward a little bit and you let it do its thing. And uh, if you're mask your rotor brush mask does something wrong something that you don't want you're gonna have to adjust for that now the good thing is you still have that green screen in the background so don't mind your edges too much definitely like here in the hands you can see how the rotor brush is not really like going around my fingers don't worry guys we have the green in the back we can easily remove that later on but that's the general id guys you want to adjust and just kind of like rotor brush that entire thing once you're done, you're going to have to press here, freeze. I'm not going to do that right now because that's going to take long. You want to click on the freeze button if it's actually done with everything. Go back to your composition and you should be keyed out. You're going to be left with a few like green spots areas. So we're just going to go over to the effects and presets library and look for key light. Where is it? Right there. Key light. Drag that onto your clip. And for screen color, we're going to select the green, obviously. Now we have to like look a little bit for the green, but I think it's right here between my fingers. There we go. And the green is gone. You can see here what it does to your entire shot. It actually works pretty good. Of course, you can tweak further with the screen mats here. With the clip to black, we can kind of make the inner selection, like myself, stronger. Or clip to white, if we're going to bring that down, we can make the surrounding stronger. So if you still have some artifacts like going around that, you can... Uh, Kind of tweak that with these two settings as well as your total edge if you th still believe that there is this edge around yourself then you can also like shrink that a little bit to minus one or something minus two to kind of like shrink that keying a little bit in as well as the softness you think that the edge is too hard you can add like one or two softness on the edge but you know that should work a combination of the rotor brush and the key light effects now, I'm going to sheet again, guys. I've actually pre-rendered my keying because it was a lot of work with the rotor scoping and everything, but it's just gonna be a boring tutorial if I would show you the entire process. It's really that. Go forward a couple of frames, brush a little bit, go forward again, and that takes for hours, <laughs> if not days. So right here, I got my own Jordy keyed out shot. Let's bring that in here. There we go, and let's Replace that here with the other shot. So I'm just going to delete this one and de-check the solo button. There we go. We are now inside the International Space Station. Look at that, guys. And I'm just floating with all of these objects. I love it. There are a couple of last things that we have to do. Like, for example, here with the popcorn. Uh, when it's actually going into my mouth, you can kind of see like, oh, here it does something not so really good. So what I'm actually going to do for that is select the popcorn layer, bring up my position, create a keyframe for it, go forward in time, just where I'm going to eat it, and perhaps bring that better to my mouth. What you always want to do is make sure to ease those keyframes. That way you don't actually see your animation or you don't feel it. For the first one, we choose easy ease out. And for the last one, easy ease in. That way we start smooth and we end smooth. So, so if we take a look at it, you know, that animation should not be noticeable. There we go. And it goes beautifully into my mouth, which is perfect. Now, right here, I kind of like want to wrap my tongue around the popcorn. So what I'm going to do is simply create a mask. Right here, we can just kind of like draw a mask around it like that. Open up the properties for the popcorn layer. 
just tap the M key on your keyboard to bring up the uh, mask properties. And we're going to create a keyframe for the mask path. We're going to go forward one frame. You can do that by holding down the control key. And just pressing the arrow to the right. And uh, let me just zoom in a bit more on that. Take my arrow key. And just adjust my mask. So that's like kind of like going to take the shape of my tongue a little bit. Go one frame forward. Like this is a little bit of framework. Like here, my tongue is closing in. And you can just kind of change this mask over time the way you want automatically. It's going to create keyframes for that. Let me just zoom in here on these keyframes. As you can see, because we have enabled animations for the mask paths, go forward again. And now my tongue is really wrapping around it. Something like that looks good. Don't worry too much, guys. This goes really fast. And I'm actually pretty far in the background. So I'm not worrying too much that it doesn't look really that realistic. But you know, this is this is okay. This is okay. There we go. Now the popcorn is gone. There we go. Perfect. And you know, you might want to feather that as well. So let's press MM twice. That brings up all the properties of the mask. So for the mask's feather, let's just add, I don't know, like 10 or maybe 5. Again, VFX is all about going back and forward, but this is looking good. Look at it. I'm just eating it. And this doesn't look really good, but if you look at it from a far distance, it actually does. It goes so fast that nobody notices that there is an animated mask on the popcorn. One last thing, guys, because at this point, we're going to do a focus pool to Lucky my little mascot right here. And I see that the battery of my little light right here is dead. Yeah, always charge your batteries. That was indeed no RGB light that I actually have in my case. I just have this little light laying on top of it. But that doesn't matter, guys. We are here for a tutorial, not for lights in the case. So uh, let's do that focus pull. Super easy at the point where we can kind of see the focus pull happening. I'm going to add an effect to my keyed out layer, me, the Jordy layer. We're going to go look for the camera blur. Obviously, that's going to be the best blur to uh, create uh, out of focus objects. And at the beginning, it can be zero. Then create a keyframe for the blur radius for zero. Go forward in time when Lucky is in focus. There we go. And now, I don't know, like 10, 20. Again, guys, go back and forward. That's what Via Vix is all about. This is too much. Look at your background, guys. I'm too much out of focus in contrast to the background. So let's change it to 10. It has to make sense. This is looking better. I think maybe 8 is going to be a bit more natural. This is good. This is looking really good. So now we have that focus pool going on in here, which is really nice. Look at that. That looks like a really good focus pool. And this is also everything that I kind of did. That That's all there is to it. You can add your color grading onto it if you like. So with an adjustment layer, you can you can add some flares, some explosions, some I don't know anything you extra want to it. But this is the basis. This is how I created my utopia. I really hope that this tutorial video inspired you guys, that you learned something new of how you can utilize Unreal Engine together with After Effects, and definitely with the camera tracking. I think that is something really valuable uh, to take with you into your VFX career or hobby. Maybe it's something that you can use for your artwork that you can submit to the MSI Creator Awards 2022. I would really love to see what you are going to make and I'll be happy to judge for the film category. So again, guys, check out the link in the description down below. May the 30th is the deadline to submit your artwork. So go check out the link. All of the information can be found on the website. And I'm just really excited to go through all of your art pieces and pick out a winner. You have seen the prices already. Again, you can check the link down below to see which prices those exactly are. So I really hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you, MSI, for making all of this possible. The MSI Creator Awards are really awesome. And uh, as always, stay creative.